It's a pity there are so few of us here because this is going to be a very, very interesting session with Devapriya Roy and Devdan Chaudhary, where Devapriya talks about the challenges of traveling through India. And we know she has done that. So she's very, very eminently qualified to talk about it. Devapriya and Devdan, if you could take your seats. Thank you. Please comment. There is something of uh, this book and my life is uncanny resemblance in some way, I must tell. So why I am first talking about a travel book? I have written a literary fiction. But in my novel, there is a chapter where the protagonist also does backpack travel. So I've covered about 30 pages of backpack travel in my novel. So this is one connection. And second is, this is very interesting. You did this trip in 2010. It mm. uh, must be in March or something. This was uh, uh, this January, was? February. And then we did for the uh, next part, mm. uh, May, June, July. So May, June, three July. months. Three months. So during that same time, late March, and April, I did the same trip in a backpack. In 2010, I went to Jaipur, I went to Pushkar, I oh, went wow. to Jodhpur, I went to Jaisalmer, I went to the Thar Desert, which you didn't do. Yeah. So then yes, I went. We had that budget constraint. And yeah. Then, after, like the twins in that book, and I went to uh, Kumbh Mela after that. So I could really feel that. And also, the Heat and Dust Project, the name, two, uh, 2010 was for me a heat and dust sort of a year. Because in April, I went to the Thar Desert, it was like 48 degrees Celsius. And the same year, in August, I went to Egypt in the hottest month, and it was like 50 degrees Celsius in certain parts. So that was a year of heat and dust for me. So there was a strange connection with the book, that kind of thing. And the third, third part is that, this book has a very interesting format. So it's a combination of format. Let's talk about the format, then we we'll go forward. That's right. It, it's a combination of a travelogue, and there's sort of literary fl uh, like flourishes. When I say some things, what he is going to respond to that. So, you know, I'll do a little bit of ghost. Yeah. Ghost and sort of jha. Yeah, I was just coming to that. This is uh, like written in a polyphonic manner. That means she has written certain parts, then Sorov comes and writes certain parts, and again, there's a distinct two voices which plays around, which is a, a very nice sort of a literary quality of a polyphonic. So, first, the, the obvious question, how did it all happen? You know, th th this is very interesting. The project came how did it happen? How did you proceed? How, how did you plan up the thing? So, you know, uh, we, when we traveled, that was 2010. But even before that, there was this epiphanic moment, you know, when, which is also there in the book, when we decided that we would just, you know, never, we wouldn't wait for life to make it easy for us to live our dream. You know, it, it doesn't exist. We'll throw caution to the winds. And we'll, we'll actually do it come what may. And this was a, a hard decision because let me tell you why. It's, of course, it's a difficult decision for everyone. But we, ha we had the peculiar misfortune of being married. And you see, the moment you are married and you are, you've taken up householding in, in a manner of speaking, then you're expected to be sort of sane after that. In any case, uh, Saurav and I, we had leapt into marriage without really thinking it through. We, uh, uh, we were in JNU and we didn't have jobs and, and so that was the first, let's say, the first bad decision. And after that, so obviously there was a lot of drama and my first novel is partly based on that. And then after that, we cleaned up our, our acts for about a year and a half. We got, both got jobs and we lived in this really sunny place and all of that. But for only about a year and a half. So after that, we then again broke the news to our parents that, you know, we are going to move all our stuff from Delhi to Calcutta and dump it with you. And then we are going to go around India on a very, very tight budget. So you can imagine the reaction to that. They were like, what? So... And I think the real reason for that was that we were embracing also uh, the writerly life. We were writing our first books. Mine was a novel, Saurav's was this hardcore non-fiction book. But we had embraced that life. And the main crisis that then happens is that you wonder what is your material going to be after this. Are you going to only keep writing urban, you know, which is the life that we knew. We were both city city born, city bred, we, were, uh, we grew up in Calcutta. 
so it was a combination of these things you know and we decided that we would see the country and we would we would not see it in in the way in which the experience is uniformly the same all fancy hotels look alike and all sh all shady rooms are different from each other you know so we decided to push ourselves out of the uh, out of our comfort zones and we set up set for ourselves a budget of 500 rupees a day for both of us for bed and board and we decided to see what india would be like what bharat would be like if we bust it yeah but, but your idea of that was there that i'm going to go and travel then i'm going to take notes i'm going to put it as a book as as a project so that that, that was yeah. pretty much there in your head yeah the you idea know? of the uh, you know we had managed to convince a publisher that it seemed like something that they would be interested in so so th that's the thing so let us now talk about uh, first to introduce the idea of a backpacker. You know, backpacker is a different, a lot of people, uh, a lot of Indians don't really understand the concept of backpacking. They are usually tourists or like travelers. So let us talk about a bit of uh, the backpacking philosophy, the essential backpacking philosophy. Like she said that it, it has a budget, you know, like uh, 500 rupees or whatever that you want to, you are actually traveling in a longer span of time. Yeah, you're, yeah. Uh, you're, you're ready to drift. You know, the tourist essentially always has a list things to do, things to tick off because, well, and you can't blame her or him, you know, they have a, a few days of holiday to do it. For us, we had really taken the leap off the deep end. We had very, uh, we had a very small, we had very small savings because as you know, if you only worked for a year and a half in a big city, then you, you haven't saved much. So we wanted to make that last out as long as possible. And there's one thing that we also say in the book that this was this was Saurav's idea that you know Buddhist monks were cautioned against sleeping under the same tree for more than three nights in a row. Because such is the human temperament that even in three nights you begin to get attached. So the tree will become your tree, you know. Just because you sleep under it, you know, it'll become like a home and then you'll get attached to it. So they'd say you have to be on the move and I would grow roots in half a day so I would get to a place and my impulse would be oh my god this is so beautiful we have to live here and and he would be no 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 we have to keep moving so so that sort of captures uh, you know so I think I was less of a of a backpacker I, I've become more now all right. Uh, so one of the things also about back backpacking is that uh, from the travels, there are three kinds of backpackers uh, whom you meet uh, doing the backpacking circuit. And this is also uh, something like a lonely planet sort of a people, you know, a lonely planet guide. Like if I also travel in uh, India, like she has done, we go for the lonely planet guide because, yeah, because it's that, really useful. Yeah, it is really useful because it has the maps, it's got the nice places uh, are listed for all kind of budgets. And it is a, like a, you go to those places, you meet other travelers also. This you is meet the part, other travelers. Yeah. And also what happens is, of course, the moment Lonely Planet has featured one of these places, then they become Lonely Planet certified and then their prices go up. So the trick is to go to one of those Lonely Planet places, but look nearby. There'll be a few others which have come up on that model, but have not yet been recognized by Lonely and Planet, often, so cheaper. Of, of, often with a close name. Exactly, yeah, exactly. the close name of a, like a, pro a famous property, they'll just try to, you know, uh, pretend that is the same property, you know, that sort of thing. So this is the thing. So three essential kind of backpackers, you know, uh, what I find is ascetic, who's really on a budget and doing that. And there's the mid-range ones who are probably, uh, has a little bit of comfort features thrown in. So they'll and need a yeah, TV in the yeah, room. They'll need a TV and something and thing. And the hipsters ones, you know, those people who can afford a lot of money and stay, but still they prefer to be a backpacker. So. Uh, uh, that is because they like the uh, atmosphere of the backpacking and the kind of interesting people you meet. Uh, uh, we'll talk about that later. And uh, so this is but the I thing. Must, yeah. But I must clarify, and we've said that in the book also, we, we didn't want to become the third category because we didn't have the money, you know. So it's not that we were, you know, taking a little exotic trip down Bharat, you know, like how a lot of people say that, you know, oh, this is India and that is Bharat and you, you know, you, you sort of, you say, okay, I'm, I'm going to walk in Bharat and it, it wasn't that, it wasn't, a, you know, a, a, a sort of an exotic uh, exercise. We, you know, we've really made big changes and we've tried to remain true to to the essential philosophy behind. And also things like that. So uh, uh, let us talk a bit more about uh, the places you've been to. No? Uh, in the book, she uh, actually she has traveled around uh, about for six months totally. Yeah. So that will become three books, isn't it? Uh, 
actually that's going to be two books it was all going to be one big book but then it would have been expensive and nobody yeah, would have bought, bought it, it so. so we decided to break it up and now it's going to be a trilogy so this is the first part first word, the broke couples guide to bharat I, i'll tell you a story about that bit and uh, so the second part is called man woman road and that captures our journey from delhi down to kanyakumari again all on buses in may june and july so we were in madhya pradesh when it was 48 degrees that's it uh, so let's talk about rajasthan like the place uh, this book has covered is that they started from delhi is it that yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a, or calcutta delhi delhi, delhi 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 to jaipur jaipur to pushkar pushkar to jodhpur jodhpur to uh, jaisalmer then th there was a big fight between uh, there was a big fight in jaisalmer <laughs> between big fight between sorov and her because whether they could go to the desert or not that can they didn't go and that was of yeah. course the yeah. sort of the initial fight you know how initial fights are really a metaphor for many many fights and you know one of the things that we say about this book is that or this journey this sort of journey for anyone is that it's the ultimate relationship test so whether you're lovers or whether you're friends your relationship is going to be tested if you if you survive a budget journey of this sort then you're likely to to survive other eventualities of yeah, life yeah this talking about the relationship because you are actually uh, basically in, uh, encountering each, each other in a very different circumstances which you never did earlier you know so what are the st uh, stresses and strains where does it come from and how to like deal with it when you are actually traveling with a one single partner that that's very different than going in a group going or going alone solo. or with yeah. a group i think the main uh, the, the main anxiety was about money you know and what happened is that we were unmoored you know we had we had we had left our jobs we had our stuff was somewhere else you know how you know your furniture and these things are your little fences of domesticity they are very frail fences and then we decided to dismantle those so whatever books that we had our furniture that was somewhere else we were somewhere else and then you know we were let loose so there's the the massiveness of the country it really hits you once you're outside and you know every time in a bus packed with people going from one place to another either during the day or in, in the darkness of the night oh, i would tell sort of you know i you finally get to see where the 1.2 billion people of this country really live you know so there's something very disorienting about that initially so it both sets you free but it also reinforces some fear so we were we were worried about money we were, so when we had that big fight it was also about how we would spend the budget then you know i am addicted to cake or chocolate in some form okay so i would have withdrawal symptoms and and sort of used to really enforce the budget 500 men 500 so if you take away 300 or 350 for a room then you are left with very little so you can only have like roti and sabji in some dhaba you can't afford cake so uh, so so part of that yeah certain places you also been that there's no cake also is there's it there's no cake also <laughs> yeah yeah so you can only dream of yeah, cake yeah uh, the initial you know the impulse let's talk about initial impulse like when you are leaving home you are you're like moving away and you have packed your stuff and you're anxious and you also uh, got a lot of a lot of liberty also inside you you know so it is not only about anxiety yeah, but yeah. it's also that that, that 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 liberty of being on the road and be away and just being on the road so what is this conflicting emotions uh, which uh, uh, and and the, and the amazing thing about being on the road is that that's actually the best part when you're literally on the road so you know for me the favorite part was when the bus would leave the 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 city or the town and it would begin to pick up speed and it's just hit the highway and that's the moment that was the best so not the arrival not the departure the the being in motion you know uh, uh, but coming back to what you were saying what are the conflicting things see if you're cooped up in a space for large lengths of time and also this sort of journeying it unstitches you from inside as well so a lot of things which you thought you'd buried inside begin to surface a lot of memory a lot of things about the past so so you know and in any case we've always been a couple very prone to fighting you know so i think it depends yeah we were more on the on the other side so yeah th that is the you know kind of a therapeutic sort of effect of uh, travel or backpack travel is that you got a lot of time you are on a lot of buses and you got this reflect 
creative mode inside you, you know. That's why all these things, memories uh, keep coming in. That's good that you put all these things in the book, you know, to give a real sense that what yeah. you felt at certain times and all that. So, uh, how did you plan the structure of the book? Uh, did, did you plan it or did it you It was like, really hard. Yeah, Actually, yeah. that was, a, you know, initially we used to think that doing the travels would be really difficult, but it turned out that writing the book together was harder. Many more fights. Let's not go into that. But you see, the problem that often happens with travelogues is that they tend to get very dull. So even an idea which seems really exciting, oh, you know, it's so cool, after 20 pages, it can get really dull. So then the trick is that it'll have to read like a novel. It'll have to make you want to turn the pages and stay up at night. There's nothing else that, that you know, that'll keep a book alive for you. So getting that narrative right was, was tricky. Then there was another problem, you know, which we encapsulate in a chapter, uh, in a chapter called How to Write in Indian. You know, when you're writing this book, we were very clear in our mind what this book was not going to be. Obviously, because we are not um, foreigners traveling in India, it would not be an outsider's gaze. It would very much be an insider thing. So, uh, so a lot of things which would dazzle somebody coming from outside, because India is like that, so many colors, so many people, so much noise, it, it doesn't affect us. We live with it every day. So obviously, that perspective would be different. At the same time, we wanted to position the book in the tradition of Indian travelogues. We have a very robust tradition of travelogues in all the Indian languages, especially in Bangla, which I have, I have read, but also in Hindi. And we wanted this book, even though it's written in English, to belong to that tradition. And so that, that was another... Um, like name some like Bangla books. Uh, like Bangla oh, books, so my favorite is uh, Shoyud Mujtaba uh, Shiraj's uh, Deshe Bideshe. Shoyud Mustafa Ali's Deshe Bideshe. And that's my favorite. But there's also Rahul Chankritayan, who was my grandmother's favorite. Then there are, you know, Amrita Kumbhe Shandhane. It's the Nobunita Debshin did something even more fun because her travelogues are also, you know, they're also uh, these, these, whim these really funny uh, women's narratives, you know. So she combines both. So we've had that. So we wanted the book to belong to that, that genre. There are also, you know, there's this very interesting uh, travelogue that I read in, in Gujarati. In, I read it in translation, set in the 1920s. And uh, that's, that's sort of a part pilgrimage. But it's very interesting because then pilgrims used to actually travel with the food, which they would then cook. So there were no, there were no hotels or inns or, what, or, or sarais. They would just stay on a ledge and some local farmer would provide them the fuel and they would cook khichdi and eat that and then move again and buy their gro so that was that seemed even better you know e even more freer way to uh, travel uh, but in Rajasthan, uh, like, you know, this backpack circuit is pretty well established, you know, that like yeah, uh, yeah. each and every place is there, lots of places you can choose and that is, you know, infrastructure is there. But what about Gujarat? I have not traveled in Gujarat. Gujarat. So what was Gujarat experience? So Gujarat is not touristy like Rajasthan is. So Rajasthan, it's very much part of their image. So, you know, you'll have pasta everywhere and you know you'll have the the uh, the, the israeli cuisine because uh, as they all know, taste indian though yeah, yeah very much but uh, it's 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 very interesting because israeli kids straight out of army service they make a beeline for india so many of them so these twins who are there in the book who we befriend we met them in pushkar then in jodhpur and then we spend a lot of time together with them in pahalganj where we hang out there's a lot of pahalganj in this book so the twins their both their sisters had come their brothers in law had come so it's it's a family thing thousands of kids come and these children these young people they travel in our country they live on very small budgets and they have so much fun and i often see a lot of our urban uh, you know, young youngsters. In any case, they lurch from straight from class 12 to college. The only sort of gap here in this country is when you take a year off to prepare for an entrance exam. Yes. You know, so uh, they have they have a wonderful time. Yeah. Uh, it's a pity that, that the backpacking culture, this traveling young culture is not there in India as yet, isn't it? It's coming in slowly, but yeah. but nobody can really... No, you know, I'll, there's so many kids who will tell us, you know, yeah, we've backpacked in Europe, yeah. but in India, is it safe? Is it, you know, so, yes, it's safe. Yeah, it is safe. I, I don't think that, you know... I, I, 
Yeah, so uh, about this from Gujarat. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, I didn't yeah. answer your yeah. question at all. Gujarat, because of the Gujarati ethic for value for money, okay, it gave us really good, it's, you get cheap hotels because there are local traders who go from town to town. So there are decent clean places to stay that fell within our budget. You get these Gujarati thalis. So in Junagar where we spent a lot of time, for 30 rupees we had unlimited thalis. Okay? So Gujarat was, uh, and the Gujarat state transport buses are also cheap. The roadways are good. Because of, like I said, the Gujarati ethic for, you know, value for money for everybody and because there's a lot of local travel for trade that happens. So, and you know, not potato enough traders. Not tourists are there, uh, like not enough of these backpackers, international backpackers in that circle. Not, not so much, but Junagar is incredible. Junagar is incredible and I'm sure sooner than later it's going to, you know, tourism there is going to pick up because Uppercourt Fort, it's, it, it's, it's, it's something else. You know, uh, so uh, uh, like Gujarat, how long were you there in Gujarat uh, in the thing? So you know, this is the first like you part were of moving the, pretty quickly. We were uh, moving pretty quickly, but I th uh, yeah. So in Junagar also, we must have been three four days because of Saurav's insistence on following the three day Buddhist route. <laughs> you know, because he was afraid that I would say, oh, you know what? Let's chuck the rest of the journey. Let's stay in Junagar or it, it, everywhere. It was uh, Jaisalmer or Pushkar or wherever. Yeah, it's, it must be hard, you know. Like uh, that's true that you want to push out. You know, like whenever like backpackers usually travel, they'll have a time limit, like I'll be there for two months, then I will decide where I'm going to spend more time and also they pause where they like, they move which they don't like. So here you are like moving really and, fast. And you know coming back to something that you asked me before that one of the other reasons for anxiety I think is if you set out to write a book then you always live with the fear what if you can't, you know what if you can't turn all this incredible material into a book that works because books have their own ideas you know they exist in their own space so turning that into the book so i think that definitely must have been one of the anxieties also and you're also taking notes you have to always keep on taking notes yes. and you know th yes. these are also important and also people won't generally open up to you and tell you the stories unless you tell them i'm basically writing a book and so uh, no let but, me tell your story. but in any case if you tell them you're writing a book then they'll give you really politically correct answers in any case I think you know that Indians are pleasers at a general level so you know we had used to have lots of conversations in buses so initially they are going to want to tell you what you what they think you want to hear it's only when you keep talking for a uh, which of course we could because the buses never reached anywhere on time there was a there was a lot of time to chat and you also volunteer information about yourself of course coming back to Gujarat in Gujarat everywhere we were asked what is your cast? No, first they would ask, so what is the salary that you get this, you know, this writing, shiting, what is the, they want to understand, what is the monetary model for this? And then they say, and, and what is your cast? So, so they, they were still asking you the cast in Gujarat? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, uh, many places in yeah. India, not just Gujarat. Gujarat. Gujarat, yes, but also in Rajasthan. And but you were telling that you are a Bengali, obviously. Uh, you no, no, they wanted to know caste, caste and okay. where are you from. But you know, it's not that they do it ill-meaningly. Also, yeah, it it's is just a natural way of conversation, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's an yeah. information that will help them s understand you somewhat or slot you in a particular way. And Sorry. so it's not that we got offended. It's a it's a conversation point, and you see that you, they're doing it out of a, a kind of open curiosity. It's not ill-meant. Yeah. So then you went to, you came back to Delhi, Paharganj. Let's talk about Paharganj, you know. I love Paharganj. Yeah. Paharganj has a very uh, sort Disreputable. of a CD, a CD sort of a reputation. Actually, I went and visited. I didn't stay in Paharganj, but I spent about two, three hours there during one of my trips. I didn't find it CD at all. Now you have got very posh hotels also coming up. Yeah, in the but see, there are posh hotels yeah, also, yeah, but yeah. there are those CD hotels with funny names which target the Israeli backpackers. And, you know, my, uh, and we used to hang out with our Israeli twin friends over there and my complaint at all times was that they fit in and I didn't so nobody would try to come and sell me hash or you know so so whenever we were with the twins that people would sidle up to them and say you know what do you want to buy do you want coke do you want women what do you want and you know and they would be really offended and, and I would be like I have boring written all over me <laughs> you know they are treating me as, a, as an outsider that you know 
I mean, I'm not even worth so. You, so they would joke that yeah, you know, maybe the second-hand bookstores, which Paharganj has amazing second-hand bookstores. Yeah, maybe they'll try to do some trade with you on the side. Like uh, there's a darker side to it also. Doing this backpack travel in India is that if you don't look like a very uh, what do you call cosmopolitan backpacker, like how you dress and all, and you might look like you're from America or something Indian from America, then they are very nice with you. And if they find that you're from Indian Indian who's going, they don't warm up, and they don't warm up in the sense that Indians who run those places they don't warm they up. They don't to warm you. up. So. Yeah. In other parts of India, we had no problem with this, but in Paharganj, uh, it, it was yeah. In Paharganj, there was this one uh, hotel where it was a schizophrenic experience for us because there were these brothers who ran the hotel, and one was extremely obliging, and the other was very nasty. So you know, in the morning you'd see one, and in the afternoon you'd see the other, and it would change. So, so they said that you know, we want proof of your marriage. Okay, so this is happening in Delhi. Nowhere else, other places they would ask us, so what relation are you to each other? Friends. They would be really hopeful that we'll say friends. We say no, we married. So it was kind of a bit of a downer for yeah, they're them. They're probably thinking you're lying or something. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, but in Pahangan, he said, I want proof of marriage. So you know, yeah, some something and. And strangely, I think because I also felt very uh, annoyed, I kept arguing. I could have just walked there are like a hundred hotels in Pahar, shady hotels of that sort in Paharganj. But then later on, when we came back to Paharganj again, we, we stayed in a place called Major's Den, which was actually very nice. Uh, it's run by a, uh, an old uh, major, and it's his ancestral house, which he's turned half of it. He's turned it into a a homestay, but you're right. In many places, they don't want Indian Indians. Yeah. 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 Unless you are like cosmopolitan or something like you're dressed like you know. Oh, you yeah, maybe yeah. A, maybe if you're an NRI, that works. NRI, but NRI works. Yeah, that kind of thing. You know, come to cargo shots. How you dress up that also makes a difference yeah. whether you're wearing you know. But I think yeah. that's changing now. Okay. Now it's changing a lot. So we didn't. We before we heard that say in Tajganj in Agra. They didn't want Indians to come and stay at all. So, say young Indian tourists, uh, students who went from Delhi to Agra, like on a weekend, they couldn't stay in Tajganj in those really cheap rooms. But I think now it's changing. Yeah, but uh, I will just recall an experience of mine about the Israelis. The Israelis really come here, and uh, in uh, Manali, there is a place called Vashisht, it's just nearby Manali. That is a total Israeli occupation. You know, it's an Israeli occupation. All the signs are in Hebrew and things like that. Those places are run by Indians. Like if you go there and if you are not an Israeli and you said, "What's the uh, price of the room?" They will look at you and say, seven thousand rupees, ten thousand rupees." You know, like that. You know, yeah. Th this is what they did to me because I did a long uh, oh. lay lay. Ladakh uh, trip, all you know, right. from Manali to Jespa, Kelong, and Leh, Ladakh, and Kashmir, and all that. Long trip, uh, once upon a time in 2004, I think. So I went to Vashisht. I was staying somewhere in Manali, but I just went to see Vashisht, yeah. and they said, like, you know, they looked at me now, 10,000 rupees. I said, uh, then the Israeli yeah. people will come, they'll give it for 500 bucks. So this yeah, is a yeah. stuff which happens in, in India, yeah. Yeah. which is not done by Israelis, but the Indians themselves, you know, yeah. because. Uh, but it's just yeah. a way of saying we don't want you. Yeah, we don't want you, okay. because also the. Uh, the uh, other business, the hash, mm -hmm. the the drug trail, you know, that is very strong, certainly, you know, certainly. because they can't sell you those drugs and yeah. like that yeah. openly yeah. to Indians. Yeah. So they are all drug And they trainer. don't want, you see, they don't want a certain kind of Indian tourist anyway. They have a particular model and they want to keep at it. But, you know, but we used to also have long conversations with some of the hotel owners and and they said that many of them were again sort of reconsidering somewhat. I don't know this particular Leh Ladakh, that bit we haven't done. Vashish is so totally Israeli. Vashish you know. is totally Israeli, that I know. Yeah, that is completely. They've just taken over the thing. And also a place called uh, in Kangra Valley, near Kangra Valley, the famous Malana cream, uh, mm. that area. Mm. And there was a report mm. in newspapers about, mm. I think, two months back or three months back, where an Indian was refused food in a restaurant. Like they won't serve to an Indian, and it 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 became a big, 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 big issue. Like yeah. if you go to Goa, also there are, we, yeah, there are certain enclaves, enclaves which are sort of no go. No go. Yeah, that's so true. The, the, this is a darker side to this uh, mm. whatever the India travel, mm. uh, like Indian experience for young Indians. Yeah. You know, so uh, tell us about the one of the greatest uh, thing about the backpacking is the discoveries of these little hotels and little inns mm. and run by families. And you and know? you realize your needs are whittled down to to so little that you realize that, you know, just a clean sheet can make you ecstatic, you know. So in, in, in this day and age when otherwise, you know, there are so many people are so specific, you know, they have a neck cream, you know, they'll have a hand cream, they'll have 10 different kinds of cream for the, so, you know, it, 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 it is important. I think it's a good life lesson. 
Yeah, good life lesson and also a lesson uh, in the sense about you know why we need Swachh Bharat so much, you know, because if you travel in say Southeast Asia or places like Laos, Cambodia, and all that, if you go to a, even a village and if you take a room for just uh, two dollars or something, they you'll get a clean room, and if the bathroom is also common, you'll get a clean bathroom. But here, there is no guarantee of cleanliness. You know, that is a major one of the problems of yeah, India, yeah, yeah. which is just so. Which is why uh, we were not always, especially on the second part of the journey, we were not always in the backpacking circuit anyway. So we stayed in, you know, in if you remember, jab we met, and you remember the ghante ke hisab se rooms. We stayed in a whole lot of ghante ke hisab se rooms, very very shady, and you know, you get that smell of dust. Which, yeah. yeah. So basically, that is also like a like a people should know that it's a tough. To it's, it was very yeah, tough, and, and it also it's tough. tough to keep your emotions, you know, in calm mm -hmm. in into dealing with this. So, uh, like, did you fight with any travelers or any hotels or things, or did you keep calm? You know, that that's very important things to keep calm, isn't it? That's what uh, backpacking and travel actually teaches you. Never lose your temper with others. With I others, yeah. I mean, that's actually an interesting thing. We never really had a. Big, uh, of course, there is that incident in the book, that, but that, that's that, that, not. That's personal, yeah, that's personal, but not in terms of. Uh, I remember in Madurai, I that is going to be in the next book. We went to this uh, room, and and it was and it was really horrible. And for some reason, I snapped and I said, "For tonight, let's not stay here. You know, let's just." And it was night, and in any case, when you reach a place at night, which is most places, because again, the buses are very late. The place seems very forbidding. In the light of day, next day, everything seems different. The people who you thought, oh, these must be thugs or criminals. In the morning, you just see, no, they're just your regular Joes. Yeah, so you and know. Also the, that, that, there's also an adventure of going into a town which you don't know in the night. In the night. In the night. Then it becomes like a high you get. Uh, you it's know? a high. It you know, that's a, I don't know. This is kind of a, you know, unknown territory and that's kind of a dark alleys and things yeah. like that. That's great. And uh, let's talk about uh, something you want to share, something very important about the first part of the book. Uh, so, you know, I, I didn't sort of, I kind of rambled uh, and started saying something else. But while we were writing the book, initially we started, we thought we'd do it in the third person and write about the two of us. And then it wasn't working because, you know, the urgency of, uh, of, of the, of the I account, you know, we wanted to keep that. So then we decided that we'll keep both our very different voices and yet uh, so as not to make it too difficult we'd keep the linearity of the narrative uh, uh, we, we'd keep we'd keep to it so you know each of us would advance the story thus far and we didn't really know how the structure would work so I started and then almost magically I knew at which point I had to stop and let Saurav's voice come in. So, you know, I tend to get hysterical. So, after a little while, I could sense that, you know, okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm probably starting to shriek. So, you know, it's important for me to stop in. So, I think that is uh, one of the important things about the book. And one, uh, one very important, uh, like refreshing and nice innovation about the book, I would like to say, which I found, in spite of being a travelogue, it doesn't, the chapters are not really on places. It is, they are not named as places. So I'll just give you an example. Uh, chapter one, how not to grow roots in three days. Chapter two, how not to get mixed up in other people's pilgrimages. Chapter three, how not to be blue. So how to write in Indian. So these are little stories which is also part of these chapters. How did this structure come about? This is a very refreshing way of uh, putting things in. Well, I can't, I, I can't quite recall, but through the extremely difficult, this book nearly killed us, you know, getting it, getting it right, making it both fun, yet not making it non-serious, because, you know, this travel was to actually engage with the people we met, to, to understand India, however cliche that sounds, but so, you know, to keep the depth and yet make it fun and yet make it a page turner. That was a that was a real challenge. So somewhere along the line, I think this this came about the structuring as a how to uh, like a like do a, it yourself. Yeah, do it yourself. Guide. That's very nice. So uh, one of the things, pleasures of backpacking is people you meet, you know. So let's talk about some of the people. Just share some of your experience with the people you met on the road. So one uh, and every time I'm asked, I pick different people depending on the day. In 
from Jaisalmer, where I was not allowed to go on a desert safari, which is what everybody does, but we didn't have the budget. So, you know, uh, Mr. Jha, who's, you know, the ghost sitting right here, he said, no, no, nothing doing, we can't go. So then we went from Jaisalmer to Barmer. And Barmer is totally not a tourist town. It's, a, it's, oil town it's an now. oil town and it's bizarre because it's basically a very, it used to be a very sleepy hamlet and a little sort of uh, district head and now it's become it's become huge so all the neighboring villages have been swallowed up real estate is at a premium in Barmer because companies like Kane Energy and LNT they send their staff and they are looking for places to hire and so you know people can charge 10,000 uh, 20,000 30,000 for just a room so it was a very interesting time in Barmer when we reached and uh, and I was very unhappy because I hadn't seen the desert and so then suddenly it was around this time and we were just walking down a very dusty so Barmer we, we, we liken it to Madna Engli Upamani Chatterjee is Madna in English August Barmer is your quintessential Madna so that chapter is called How to Survive Madna and uh, so, so Saurav just called an auto and said you know can you show her so I was sort of blathering on and on about the desert and he said can you, can you take us to the desert and this guy said, yeah, sure, get in. So we got in and then we went and he took us to the dunes. And just outside Barmer, the, the dunes rise high. So we were climbing up there and there we were. There were no tourists. It's not a touristy place at all, just the two of us. And this guy, the auto driver who we had been chatting to. And suddenly he says, you know, why don't you come to my house for dinner? And I said, certainly we will. I was thinking, you know, we'll save some money. I can buy cake tomorrow. And Sora's reaction was, you know, we don't know this guy at all. Uh, you know, are you going to? And so we were talking to each other in Bangla, I think, you know, trying to understand. But, but then we did. And it turned out to be a very, very illuminating experience. Because this man, Rama Ram Mali, he basically had bought the auto. Because he thought if he bought a car, it would really, you know, it would be too ahead of himself. He bought an auto because it was ideal for his family. He had three kids and his wife and he used to run it. Basically, the land that he had, he had built a house on it. He used to live at the back in, in a house that was very reminiscent of his village house. But then he's built a modern sort of building with two floors with rooms which are rented out to l and and he and he gets paid some 10,000, some bizarre amount of money for the rooms. And so he gave us a tour of that house and where he's got the, the tiles, the modern tiles, and he's going to install geysers and air conditioners. And something about that, it's in quite a lot of detail in the book. And then we had dinner with his family. It showed to us the, the new face, the, you know, what we keep talking about in the newspapers and in in, in, in studio discussions, this was that, that face of very quickly changing Bharat. Yeah, because suddenly a lot of money has come into that place and it is changing the, even the consciousness. And or so the there are these the off license liquor shops which stock the best of whiskies from around the world because you have, uh, because of KN Energy, you have Scotsmen coming and people, uh, oil men coming from all over the world. So it's, it's, very it's interesting. It's bizarre. I saw it's very, bar, very bizarre. Bar, 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 you know, like it doesn't look that good, but now it's got five star hotels and things like that. Now, also, uh, like you spoke about the person, and let's talk about the twins a bit more, you know, like you again met them, you know, like yeah. uh, things. So the twins were Moti and Suika Hillel, and we met them in Pushkar and then Jodhpur, and then, you know, and then in Paharganj, we spent a lot of time with them. One of them had his own little journey in India. When they came, you know, the, the connect was that they said that we are a little like a couple. So they were traveling together and we were traveling together and that made us a very nice group of four. Otherwise, there were large groups of, uh, of, of foreign travelers or there were people who had come on their own. And it was, it was very interesting because one of them, Suika, now, you know, there are these Khabad houses in certain parts where Israeli tourists frequent. So there are rabbis, traditional Orthodox Jews who live in those places. So th there's a, a Chabad house in Pahar-ganj. Okay, and we used to see the rabbi in his traditional outfit wheeling his kid in the perambulator every, every evening just on the Pahar-ganj main road, which is crazy, you know, which has cars and sometimes there's a camel which will go past and there are these shops and it's 
it's it's a people it's color and it's quite noisy so one of the twins got really involved with the cupboard house uh, network and then he went so one of them went back and one of them went to Andaman spent time there and by the time he was going back when we meet him at the towards the end of the book he has become a practitioner of of religion which he was not when he came he went to Kumbh Mela he was influenced by what he saw over there and he turned to uh, to Judaism which was a very strange journey of his own whereas his twin diverged from that entirely and his twin didn't understand what was going on so that was also in a very interesting way uh, you know uh, uh, another kind of marriage because that's the metaphor they used unraveling yeah, there is a history behind what she said because I had some Israeli friend who told me about this because Israelis know that the Israeli young people they travel in India they have uh, that's why especially they made these houses and there the advantage is if you go you stay for free you stay for free, free. only if yeah. you go and pray the next yeah, day pray. the prayer yeah. is mandatory mandatory so what they have done is a trick like young people are there they want places to stay so let us give them free and let us make this you know like you have to pray and you have to just partake so young people say I'm gonna stay free and let me do a praying and all that so this is a sort of a uh, Israeli conspiracy against their own young people you know uh -huh. this is this is what it is you know and a lot of Israelis actually uh, resent this and they will never go near so those there's places. another Yam Shaham there's another uh, person in the book he said I stayed there and I left the moment they said that you have to go and pray he said I'm not going to stay here so he Im he immediately left but Zwika is somebody who got involved with so apparently in in the Andamans because a lot of Israeli tourists go there also they had there was this couple who had set up this one room Chabad house and they told this boy that you know you should come and volunteer over there and his from a from an amusement with religion his shift that was also very interesting for us to observe from a distance and and we so your 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 story really proves that it works. You know in, what in what 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 they are thought of. It actually works. Like you can take young people into it and you make them pray. So you are actually trying to make them a traditional Jew. You know this is a this is yeah. a sort yeah. of. Though a of thing. course, I I mean I would say that Zwika is probably the exception rather than the rule. Yeah, yeah, because, but that is only happening because they're giving the rooms for free. You know. That yeah, is, yeah. yeah. So uh, something like uh, you want to share, which I have not questioned, you know, that kind of some interesting thing or detail or of the thing uh, before I ask you some little difficult psychological questions. Oh, there are difficult, more <laughs> difficult questions to follow. Oh, no, no. Dear, I thought this was done. Yeah, no, no, no. This is all, all I want to say that how does, you know, in a, in a basically deeper level, how does this uh, experience of traveling and also like a backpacker and you are actually leaving behind your stuff and your virtue packed up so you don't really have a home now anymore yeah. your home is on the road your you home is so on the road exactly so yeah, that yeah. is what becomes the truth for you the yeah. road is home okay. and then after that it becomes difficult so life after has been a little little dodgy yeah yeah because people cannot adjust back you know because there's a lot of fun in doing that you know being yeah. on the road for so long yeah. well, but how it has changed you like spiritually psychologically and and how is your relationship with Shorab has you know progressed after the trip and before the trip do you see any difference because how you used to be before the trip and how you are after the trip has something fundamentally changed within you both well well that's, have, a, have that's you a tough one but you know I think this is, it sort of turned us inside out. So the fact of the road being Has the home. Has made you more compassionate, empathic to other people, isn't it? That's, that's one, of the, the one, one of the things uh, you learn of backpack. You become more compassionate as a you person. You become more compassionate. You learn to see much more. You, you also value a lot of other things. For example, in our cities, we are very rude and angry. And there's, so you know, you, you learn to do those things as well. And and, and also to see lives who are not unlike yours, you know, to understand their yes. perspective, to understanding they also have the same right as you have, and their culture might be slightly different, or they may speak a different language, but there is, you know, that connect and the with inner, people, yes, with yes, different and the cultures. inner unity also, yeah. you know, you you also see how it is so easy for us to be plural so effortlessly. Effortless. It's because India is that dance of of unity and diversity, and all of it 
mm. in uh, celebrated that way. So it's 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 easy for us. There is also a um, uh, a book party at the end of the book, which we put in for fun when we were staying in Pahar Ganj in one of those uh, shady rooms. But we were because Saurav's first book had just been published. We were invited to a glittering literary Delhi party. So we really enjoyed making fun of that <laughs> and. <laughs> Yeah, this coming on from that travel scene and... Uh, and suddenly like, there's this, Yeah, you know? yeah. Now I think uh, I'll open up for questions. So please ask her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've read Heat and Dust and I really loved it a lot. Thank you. Um, what I wanted to ask is, and I think you touched upon this right now also, is when you're on the road and your home is the road, and you mentioned how you loved being on the road, isn't there something, and this is something I think about a lot, there's something between, you know, that willingness to drift and then when you have to come back, the stability of it. So how, how are you able to balance that, you know, being stable again? It's really hard, I have to say. Though I must qualify, I think I was always unstable to begin with. You see, you just take it day by day. Because what happened, like I said, you know, you're unstitched from all these things that for 20 years or 21 years, whatever is our education system and everything around the world that tells you that this is what you do, you establish the fences of domesticity and you stay in it and you try to, you know, you plot that and then when you take all that out of the picture, even your marriage becomes different in a, in a certain sense. So it's like I said, you know, there are good days and bad days. There are sometimes, you know, we, we also now, we feel very guilty. We say that, you know, I think we've become rusty. We must set out on the third journey immediately, you know. But I think writing the book in a way helped eviscerate that. I think that is, because this book is also part memoir, what happens is it, it cleans the slate. And then, you know, it's, the book is there and then you, you, you move on. So I think it's a mix of all these things. But it's a day-to-day -day challenge. The next question. But thank you for that question. Uh, quite insightful and uh, informative. Thank you for that. Uh, I want to ask about uh, the openness of the Indian culture while you travel, particularly when you move, uh, when you introduce yourself. You know, uh, things tend to uh, shift in a different way. You know, actually, I was here uh, yesterday uh, in the inaugural session. Uh, so I, the guy sitting next to me, he, I, we were talking about the you know time gaps, of, uh, you know, mention time and the starting time. You know, how it uh, tends to extend. You know, uh, sort of. Uh, the s session starts. Yeah. So s as soon as we introduce each other, the discussion turned in a different way. I'm from uh, Srinagar, actually Kashmir. Mm. So the things turned about uh, politics and all. So we were before talking something else, then it turned to a different thing. How does, uh, you know, openness, you know, I within think, the... No, I think this is also a very important question because we are indebted to the people who were so generous with their stories. You know, I think that is spectacular because in so here we were in all these bus journeys and we would be talking to people for hours and they would tell us their stories. I think there can be no greater gift from, from their families, various oral traditions, local historical narratives, all of it. So that openness completely, we were invited for dinner so many times, we saved our, on our budget. And, and in general, that's why I said that even when people ask you your caste, it's not in an ill-intentioned way, it's, 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 a, it's a conversational point, you know. So uh, people are also quite open about questions, so they will ask you, you know, they'll ask you lots of questions, but you get used to it, there's a certain charm in that too. Yeah, you have a question. Just keep, uh, keep it very brief, the question. Yeah. We don't You're have any time. an activist time. and you have traveled with your husband, you know, like, uh, and I also travel all over the world alone. So I just want you to tell me, so how safe it is for a woman traveler, I mean, a girl who has just come out from Single. the college to travel to alone to just... Okay, okay, we have, 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 we have,
So, um, and that's a really, and I want to say that I will reply this with full responsibility of, you know, of the importance of this question. You know, I have my young 18-year-old cousin right here. Would I encourage her to do this? Absolutely. You know, of course, that's not to say that it's all perfect. It's all hunky-dory. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, is it possible for a young woman to travel alone, especially in Jaisalmer or the backpacking circuits? Definitely so. Definitely so. You know? And we did trust upon the kindness of strangers, and, and we were lucky. But we also traveled for thousands of kilometers. So it's safe to say that we spoke to many women who were traveling alone. There is um, there's this other very interesting idea that, that uh, somebody told, Anirudh Behel, the journalist, told us about, about this girl who wrote a book on hitchhiking with truckers across the country. And she was traveling alone. It was for a, for a PhD dissertation, which then became a book. So on the whole, largely, I'd say travel, travel with some measures, for example. Now, if you have a smartphone, it's quite easy. Then the Lonely Planet Guide is very useful because it's got maps. It's got really good detailed maps. So you know, you'll never be totally disoriented or lost. OK. On that occasion, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Priya. It was a wonderful thank talking you, and backpacking. I hope that this will inspire all of you to just buy a rucksack. This is how the book ends. And just travel India and see India, the Bharat, the, the, the real India. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.